come on, stand up on your feet in Jesus' name. Uh-huh. Those who were born in May. Hey, even champion Carol, you are born in May. We want to celebrate you and uh, uh, we begin with the ladies. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. social media, maybe you saw it, I don't know, but uh, my friend uh, somewhere sent me a message on, was it Saturday? No, I think it was Friday. Yeah, it was Friday. And he sent me that, you know, this is the 21st uh, of May. This is 21st, and this is the 21st week, and this is the 21st year, and this is the 21st century. So, it was amazing. It all happened on Friday. Amen. That is wonderful. Uh, our bishop is not with us this morning. Uh, he's somewhere uh, on mission. Uh, I want us to pray for him where he is, that God's will will be done in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, raise up your hand and we pray for our bishop. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for bishop, wherever he is and whatever he's doing. Let it be all for the glory and the honor of your name. We thank you and we glorify your holy name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. That is done. Amen. I want also, uh, uh, let me take this uh, opportunity or this honor. Uh, though I have not received the permission, but let me do it. Uh, let us appreciate Sister Kathy. Kathy, can you stand up on your feet? Sister Kathy Kasavo. <laughs> Amen. So that is the wife of our executive administrator. Come on, let's appreciate her. Uh, thank you for raising your, 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 your husband that we can do the work of God. God bless you so much. Because I know our system, our setting, every time uh, when we are serving the Lord here, it's like we don't have family time. You know, any time we can call you. But I can imagine how she feels because I know how my wife sometimes says, but when will you be here? You know, we'll say, I'm here, but I'm serving the Lord. But we thank you for letting that man be here and uh, serving the Lord. Come on, let's appreciate our executive uh, also. We thank God for the work that is being done here uh, with Tarazo. We know that in a few weeks, this will be very marvelous and it will be very, very good. But we want to thank that the man behind all this is our executive administrator, Mr. Dennis. Come on, stand up and let's appreciate you in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, let's appreciate him, I know. Yeah. So uh, he works tirelessly with the team to make sure that uh, this place gives God the glory. Amen? So when you find him on the way, uh, say to him, thank you for the work you are doing. Thank you for, uh, because for some of us, we know the Bible, but these things, they needed someone who really understands how things must be done. Amen? Hallelujah. So we have been in the season of uh, uh, economic empowerment, and I know many of us we have been blessed. Come on, let me see if you have been at a, uh, you have been since this season began of uh, economic empowerment, and you have been blessed. Let me see your hand if really there's some change in your life. Come on, let's appreciate God for that in Jesus' name. 
So briefly, I want to us to go in the book of Psalms, uh, Psalm 35 and verse 27. Psalm 35 and verse 27. As we are coming to the closure of this season, I want to give you these three scriptures. I want you to write them down that you may be sure of what we are doing. Uh, the Bible says, May those who delight in my vindication shout for joy and gladness. May they always say, The Lord be exalted, who delights in the well being of his servant. Amen. So I want you to be sure that God is delighted. Uh, other version says, In the prosperity of his people. God wants his people to prosper. Amen. So, uh, or, uh, I want you to always remember that, that God wants you to be well. He delights in the world of being of his servants. He doesn't want to see you suffering. And uh, some of you say, maybe God is teaching me something. Maybe I'm going through this. Whatever you may say, but God works all things, uh, makes all things good for those who love him. So, God delights in our prosperity in the world of being of his people. But, uh, let's go in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, and verse 33. I'm giving these things, uh, these scriptures, so that they, uh, like, uh, cover or quote what you have been learning. The Bible says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Amen? So in all the things we have been learning, we have been uh, empowered economically, you know, number one is to seek the kingdom of God. Amen? Why are you saving? What are you saving for? Eh? Uh, why are you, why, why do you want to be well? So God said that he lies in the well-being of his people. But we should know that God must be number one. Amen? You know, it's, it will be good uh, as we have been given all those, uh, you know, percentages, you can save 10%, you can give to God 10%, but also you can open up an account saving for God. So I'm saving this one to give to, to, the, to, the, to the work of God. First, seek first the kingdom of God. Amen? And then uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for what? For the glory of God. So meaning that God, if God is number one, whatever you do, you are aiming to give God the glory. If you miss out that, then whatever you have learned is nothing. Amen? So if you just want to be selfish, you are, everything is you, you, me, 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 and my stomach, no, then you have missed it. But we are doing all this to give God the glory. Amen? So whatever you do, the income, the saving, the prosperity, let everything be for the glory of God, that people will see God glorified. Amen? Are we together? So uh, I wanted to give you those three scriptures that you add to those uh, other teachings you have been uh, having so that you may wrap up knowing that whatever I'm going to do, the tireless list I'm going to work in order to get money, in order to be rich, is all for the kingdom of God. Let God be number one in whatever I do. Amen? The Bible said that you may be able uh, to give to every good work if you have everything. That is also in Corinthians chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, that God is able to make all grace abound, that you may have whatever you need, and, and you may be able to, to be a blessing to every need, to every good work. Amen? So never forget that. And if you have that kind of mind, I want to tell you the sky is the limit. God is going to continue blessing us in Jesus' mighty name. Say amen. Amen. But now today I want us to, uh, to go in the book of Mark, the word I have for today, Mark chapter 5 and verse 22. Mark chapter 5, verse 22. 
up to 23. <laughs> then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded, uh, and pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we glorify your holy name. You are such a good God. We love you and we bless your holy name. Here we are receiving your word. We pray that you may bless us by the end of each and everything, the glory and honor will come back to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. This morning, I want you to be very, very, very attentive uh, what I'm going to teach briefly this morning. When you come to Jesus, what do you see or what do you want? Eh? When you come to Jesus, what do you see or what do you want? Now, we see here that there was a synagogue ruler. When he heard that Jesus has come, this ruler came to him. And when he saw Jesus, the Bible says, he fell at Jesus' feet and pleaded with him. Now, his pleading was that my daughter is very, very sick. But what I want from you is your hands. Amen? He said, what I want from you is your hands. I want you to come and put your hands on her so that she may live. After that, it's okay because I just need your hands. Amen. Let's read again, verse 22. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. 23. And pleaded earnestly with him. I want you to note those words. Uh, sometimes when we are reading the Bible, we just read like our newspaper or we just read rashly and, uh, and we fail to analyze the meaning of some of these English words. The word earnestly means that this person took time on and on and he was very serious and said, Lord, I need you. I, I'm pleading. So maybe if like in our days, he was praying maybe for one week or for two, for whatever, or from morning to evening. But the word honestly means he was very serious and on point and said, he was pleading and said, I want you to come because my daughter is dying. Please come. And when you come, just put your hands on her that she may live. I need your hands on him. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, verse 25. Let's go to verse 25. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus. Now, this is another lady. Also, she heard about Jesus. Now, she's also coming. And she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Amen. Now, this woman, for her, she never needed the hands of Jesus. No. She needed only the clothes. She said, if I just touch his clothes, that is enough. I have no other deal to do with Jesus. But what is amazing, uh, uh, Jairus do, uh, Jaira had faith in the hands of Jesus. And this lady had faith in the clothes of Jesus. But both of them, they got their miracle. Amen. Both of them, they got their miracle. And they went away. But let's go in the book of Matthew chapter 8 and verses 5. Matthew chapter 8 and verses 5. I'm going to go all the way to verse 13. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Amen. Now I want you to, to, uh, uh, to see these three kinds of people I wanted to bring to you this morning. 
Now, the other synagogue ruler came to Jesus looking for his hands. The woman who was bleeding came to Jesus looking for his clothes. Now, here also comes another one uh, who is a, uh, uh, you know, a centurion, came to him asking also for help. Uh -huh. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Say amen. Now, Jesus commanded this man. I want to see why Jesus was commanding this man. He said, I have been moving all around Israel. I have been hearing people. I have done miracles. But I have never found anyone with such a great faith as this man. Let's continue. I said to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Let's continue. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 13. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go. I want us to... To, 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 to read that word together, that, that verse. One, two, three, go. Uh -huh. Then Jesus did what? Say to the centurion. What did Jesus say? Go. It will be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that very hour. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Friends, I'm coming to you this morning to show you the power in the word of God. People, many people come to Jesus looking for other options. Say, Jesus, I just need your hands. Just come and lay your hands on my servant and he will be okay. And Jesus said, no problem, I'll come and heal your daughter because that's what you have asked for. Because whatever we ask for, Jesus answers. So he said, okay, I'll come and lay my hands on your daughter. And we see at the end, Jesus went and uh, uh, on the way, the, the, the daughter died anyway, but Jesus you know, went there and laid his hands and the, the daughter came back to life. I want to, uh, to ask you a question. What if also this centurion or, or this, Jaira, uh, this Jairus always told Jesus that uh, you send your word and my daughter will be well. What would have happened? The daughter wouldn't have died. Are we together? But he needed more time to go with Jesus and Jesus put his hands on the what? On the daughter. And also another time the lady came and said, I don't need much about Jesus. I just need to touch his clothes because what I need is my healing. And he, she took, she received her healing. Let me tell you, everything about Jesus is powerful. Amen. Everything about Jesus is powerful. Jesus' blood is powerful. Jesus, you know, clothes can heal. Jesus' clothes is different. But there's something more excellent that I want to show you today, that the word of Jesus is more powerful than whatever we may think of. Amen. And Jesus said to this centurion and said, Go! That word go was powerful, was full of power, was full of dynamis to go and reach through all the atmosphere, you know, all the demons that were in, in, in all the sicknesses that were in the, in the atmosphere and went directly to the servant and the servant was healed. And when he got down, the centurion went back and said, at what time did this boy, uh, servant get, uh, get healed? And they told him the time and he knew that was the time the exact time when Jesus spoke. Amen. 
So when Jesus speaks, there's no distance between Jesus' word to the, to, to, to the point of need. Amen? Once Jesus speaks right now, the word will go directly at that same time simultaneously and the miracle will take place. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's go in the book of John chapter 1 and uh, verses 1. I'm going to go all the way to verse 13. Let's go quickly. And in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was what? Come on, the word was what? God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So God is identical to his word. When you have the word of God, you have God himself. Praise the Lord. When you have the word of God, and the word of God is in you, and you believe that word of God, and you move with that word of God, you are having God himself. Because in the beginning, the word was there. In the beginning, the word was with God. In the beginning, the word was God. And see what happened. Verse 2. Let's continue. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Not some, but all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Do you listen to those words? Without him, nothing was made. Without the word, nothing was made that was made. There was nothing was made that has been made. Verse 4. Let's continue speedily. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Uh -huh. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Verse 9, the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world. I want you to be now to know this word. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Do you get that word? The world did not do what? Recognize him. Though he was in the world, the world did not recognize him. Verse 11. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. This is mystery. Let me tell you, you know, uh, the world, the same way Jesus the word became flesh and came and lived among people. The one who was living among people was the word of God. And this word of God came to his own. But his own did not recognize him. They did not understand him. So, but he was with them. And they did not, they, it's like they rejected him. They did not recognize his presence, his power. This is the same way when we have the word of God. The word of God has come to you. His own, to us, his own. We have the word, but we do not recognize the word. We suffer. We suffer sicknesses. We suffer troubles. We suffer rejection. We cry day and night, yet we have the word with us. Yet we have this God. Because once you have the word of God, then you have God himself. We have God. is living among us, but we don't recognize him. Amen. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Twelve. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Amen. Those who recognize that the word is present, those who recognize that the word is at work, those now, they have the right to do the things that are permitted to be done by the children of God. Now, verse, uh, let's go to verse 13. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. Now, verse 14, I want you to underline this. Uh -huh, verse 14. The word became flesh. It is the word that is changing. Do you see? It's the word they are talking about as the word became the light. It is the word. Now the word became what? Flesh. 
and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and the only who came from the Father, full of what? Grace and truth. Praise the name of the Lord. So, faith is only created when the revelation of a particular truth or a particular word is imparted in our hearts in such a way that the word becomes flesh. In other, in other words, this word which is like invisible, it has to put on flesh so that you may see it in reality. So when you believe a certain word of God, you have to make sure that word becomes a reality. It puts on flesh as if it's moving with you. Praise the name of the Lord. It becomes an integral part of you. It's like it's, it's part of you. Praise the name of the Lord. So, we see these three people. I have given the examples. One needed the hands. When the hands are over, that's all. Another one needs the clothes. When he takes the clothes, that's over. But the one who needed the word, amen, the one who needed the word, he went with the word. He was still moving with the word. He was always walking with the word. The word which said go and your, your servant will be well. That word was ringing in this man's life. What did he say? He said, I'm also you know, a, a man under authority. That word authority. This man understood what they call authority. Amen. He said, I'm also a man under authority. I can tell this one go and they go. I can tell this one do this and they do it. If I a common man, I can say that. What about God? If you say something, that something will come to pass. Amen. Let me tell you, I am a product of a word spoken by my father to my mom. My dad came to my mom and said, I want to marry you. Eh? I want to take you home. And they agreed. I was not there. So as a result, because of that word, Say, I love you, I need you, you are my sweetheart, please come, please do. Uh, now, after out of that, here I am. Because someone said yes to my father's, you know. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. So if we human beings, we can say something, and that something is put into practice. You can say something, and that something happens. What about God? Why do we have to doubt God? Praise the name of the Lord. I said praise the name of the Lord. You know, we hear words of politicians. They say words and you find the whole nation is at a standstill. You know, he said like this. You know, because he said, you are going to see what is going to happen. And yet, this, sometimes these politicians are liars. They just lie to you and, uh, and they, they just give you siasa and you believe in them. After giving their siasas, they, they go on. And for you, you are just, ah, he said, he said, if you can believe the siasas of politicians, why don't you believe the true word of God that can never lie? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Why don't you believe the true word of God? The word of God is a hammer. The word of God is fire. The word of God is the light unto our feet. That word of God, at least take only one word and believe it. Let it become flesh in your life and become, you know, reality. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you have any word of God you are anchoring on? Do you have any word of God and say, God is the one who said this? You know, the word of God does not come because everything is okay. The word of God comes in chaos. The word of God comes when things are not either, like conducive, but the word of God comes there. And when you go to people and you find places where the, you know, things are in a mess, I want to tell you, don't speak the word of God as if you are speaking the word of your uncle or your auntie. When you go in a situation and you are going to speak the word of God, I don't know how, what I can do, but speak it with all authority. It has authority. Hebrews said the word of God is living and active. It's not dead. The word of God is living and active. Someone to be living and active is just, a, you know, someone can be alive but not active. They need to be activated. You know, maybe they are in the wheelchair 
uh, if they want to go. Some people in Mulago Hospital, they are sick, they are alive, not dead, they are alive, but they are not active, they cannot activate themselves. You have to help them uh, to, do, to do whatever you have to do. But, the, the, but someone who is alive and active doesn't need your help. If I tell you to sit down, or to take your seat, I don't come and say, okay, sit like this. No, because you are alive and active, you know how to sit. Because you are alive and active, you know how to stand up. Amen? So the word of God is living and active. It does things by its own. Once you know the authority and the power that lies in the word of God, speak it with power and authority and it's going to work. Amen? Amen? When I speak the word of God, I, I enjoy speaking the word of God because I know there is power behind the word of God. The word of God is God himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The man said, don't come into my house, but come in another form. Amen? Come in another what? In another form. I want you to come in the form which cannot be taken away in the form of the word. Because if you come in, in, in the physical, you just do, you heal the sun and you go away. But when you come in the power of your word, you always stay. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why Jesus said, it's better for, me, for you that I go, that that Holy Spirit will come. And when he comes, he will dwell among you. Amen. He will never leave you. He will always be with you. That's why Jesus said, the words I have spoken to you, is life and is spirit. <laughs> Amen. The word of God is life and is spirit. So where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. So the word of God is power. I want you this morning, uh, as we are about to, 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 to prepare to cross over to, to, to the, the other half of the year, I want you to begin to walk with the word of God and knowing that God is here with me. Because once you have the word of God, you have God with you in the name of Jesus. Amen. What does the word of God say? It doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter who said what. Let people say, but let God have the final answer. Because God has the final word. Once he says, what he has said will come to pass. Amen. I have so many people who thought I will never mount up to nothing? They said you cannot. When they, they were told that Paul Kayanja is now preaching, they said, I put their money. He cannot preach. That man cannot preach. He will never preach. He will never do nothing. He's just there playing keyboard. That's all. But when she came and saw me preaching, said, What are you doing? I said, You said that I cannot preach, but God said, I am his servant. It doesn't matter who said what, but what God says to you. Amen. It's good to listen to what is happening, but don't take all everything 100%. People can say, COVID has come. There's a new variant. You know, things are changing. Now, the, the one which is coming is, going, is, is so tough, and then you begin to tremble. Let me tell you, whether the one coming is too tough, let it come with its toughness. The word of God says, by his stripes I was healed. I will not die, but live and declare what the Lord has done. Amen. It doesn't matter that all things, that things are always good, but whether things are good or bad, we have this living word that will never be taken away from us in Jesus' mighty name. You take this word out of these papers, you read it, and then you put it into your heart that whether you have this Bible or not, the word is moving with you. The word is with you. The word of God is doing wonders in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. This morning I came to tell you what the word of God says about you, not what people say is about you. The word of God says by his stripes you were healed. The word of God says you shall be the head and not the tail. It doesn't matter who says you will be down. The word of God says you will always be up. It doesn't matter what people plan for you. God has good plan for us. His divine power has given us 
Whatever we need in this life and in godliness, his divine power, not any other power, but God's divine power has already provided what we need in godliness, in this world, in godliness and in this world. There's, the Bible says, there is now, the word of God says, listen to me carefully, there is now. You know, some of you, you want to take some words, you know, there are some people, they can tell you some words, and you think those are powerful, and they say, uh, what, what did you do? How did you do it? Uh, maybe uh, you, uh, you have to repent many times. You have to fast 40 days. You know, sometimes people go crazy because they, 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 are, they are guilty conscious. They are guilty conscious there because they remember whatever they did in the past. They say, who is going to, to help me? Let me tell you the word of God said, there is now, not yesterday, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Unless you are outside the Christ. But once you are in Christ, don't condemn me. I'm now in Christ. Forget the past. Yes, it happened. Yes, I did it. Yes, those were the days. But now I'm in Christ. There's now no condemnation for me. I'm not now guilty because Jesus has taken away. Believe that word and that word will be true in your life. And God will be in your life. Amen. You shall be blessed in the city and blessed in the village. Some people are running from the villages, coming to town to get blessing. Let me tell you, you don't have to run from the village to come to town to be blessed. You have to be blessed in the village and then come to town and also be blessed. You are in the town blessed. You go back in the village, you are blessed. You know, that's the blessing of the Lord. Wherever you are, you are a blessing. Praise the name of the Lord. I said, praise the name of the Lord. And David said in Psalms 118, I said, you sh I shall not die but live and declare what the Lord has done. Who, want, who told you you have to die before your death? God said, I will give you your full lifespan. So begin to say, I shall not die but live. When sickness say, are you about to die? Say, no, I'm not going to die. I shall live. When cancer say you're about to die, say, no, I'm not going to die. I shall live. When the dreams come and tell you you're about to die, say, no, I'm not going to die. I shall live and declare the works of God. That is his word. I'm not stupid. I'm not foolish. I'm the wisdom of God. God has given him wisdom. Once I have Jesus, I have the wisdom of God. Because all with the wisdom of God was imparted in Christ. And if Christ is in me, he cannot come in me and leave his wisdom, his wisdom somewhere. Once he comes in me, I have the wisdom of God. Say amen. Say amen. You shall not suffer shame. The word of God says, you shall forget the shame of your youth. God is going to bless you and you forget the shame of your youth. That is his word. Do not be afraid. God is with you. You wake up afraid every time. They, you know, in this world, things that make us afraid will always come. But remember what God says. Do not be afraid. You shall not suffer shame. You shall not be dismayed. You shall not be a failure. You are going to do it. You are going to make it. You shall prosper because that's what the Lord wants you to be in Jesus' mighty name. He says, the lions may grow weak and angry, and, and, and angry, but those who seek the Lord will lack no good thing. This is the word of God. Come on and praise the Lord. Your children will study, they will go to school, you will not lack school fees. You know, get the word of God and stick to it and say, Lord, this is what you say. And God say, I know the plans I have for you. I know, God say, I know the plans I have for you. Huh? Which plans, counsel? I know the plans I have for you. If God says and come and say, I know the plans I have for you. And then another one comes, uh, you know the plans I have for you. No, no, tell them, God knows the plans he has for me. Amen. <laughs> he knows the plans he has for me to prosper me, to give me a hope, to give me a future. So my future is secure. Why? Because God knows the plan he has for me. Come on, say amen. 
May I stand in the anointing of the Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the authority of heaven and tell you, you are going to make it. You are successful. You are the head. You are not the tail. You are not going to die. You are going to be alive. You are going to get a good job. You are going to, your marriage is going to be secure. You are going to enjoy good life because God delights in the prosperity and the well-being of his people. Do you believe that? Say it is mine. If it's yours, stand up on your feet. <laughs> and begin to claim the word of God. Say this is mine. Hallelujah. Do you have the word of God you want to claim this morning? Do you have the word of God you want to claim this morning? I want to tell you God will never let us down. God is not a liar. Let all men be liar, but God remain true. That's what the scripture says. Eh? God is not man that he should lie or a son of man to change his mind. When he speaks, he does. When he promises, he fulfills his promises. You go and ask in Joshua lineage that all his promises have come to pass. None of them has failed. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. You go in devil lineage and find out. They will tell you God gives a balanced life. Amen. Successful life, balanced life. You know, God provides everything. Amen. You go to Esther and, and find out. They will tell you God is a restorer. You know, he restores to restore others. We are, we are highly favored. Not just favored, but highly favored. Praise the name of the Lord. I just want you to begin to claim, to proclaim and declare his word in, uh, upon your life. Just for take, about, take about two minutes and begin to, to, to speak that word into your life. According to your need, according to what you thought would never happen. According to what you say, say, Lord, no, 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 no. Now I know. Now I know your word. Now I know. Begin to talk to him. Just begin to talk to him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise and we give you honor. We glorify your holy name. We love you, Lord Jesus. There is none like you. We thank you for your word. 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 Jesus, you are the word. We thank you, Jesus, because you came and dwell among us. We thank you. And you said where two or three are gathered, you will be in our midst. That is your word. You are always in our midst, Father. We thank you, O oh God. You are always with us. Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you, Lord. Sometimes the devil, the situation, the problem that come up uh, you know, along, uh, along the way tend to, to let us forget the power and the authority in your word. But Father, here we are in the name of Jesus, believing once again your word. Your word is powerful. Your word is a hammer. No one is, go is a failure. Your word is alive and active. Your word is the light unto our feet. Your, your word is sweeter than honey. Your word is good. Your word, your word, oh Father. You have exalted your word above your name. Your word is so exalted, oh Lord. We thank you for your word. Jesus, Jesus, you are the word of God. Jesus, you dwell in us. Jesus, we have been sharing you this morning. Jesus, you are reaching to each and every one to the point of their need. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we depend on you. Jesus, you are our source of joy. Jesus, we love you. We depend on you. You are our a source of joy. We give you glory. We give you honor. There is none like you, Father. We glorify your holy name. We believe in your word. Father, there is none like you. In Jesus' mighty name, let your name be glorified. Let your word be exalted. The word is exalted above your name. We believe in your word. It was your word that brought us into the kingdom of God. It was your word that created the heavens and the earth. It was your word that made who we are. It was your word that brought things into being. It was your word, oh Lord, we thank you. It was your word that raised the dead. It was your word that oh, oh, we thank you. We give you praise. We see the sun and the moon. It was your word. Whatever we see, the birds of the air, the, you know, the, the fish in the sea, with the waters, whatever we see, it was the word. Whatever we see, it was the word. 
Without the word, nothing was made that was made. Everything is because of the word. When we see the stars, we see the word. Because you spoke and the, word, the stars came. When we see the grass, we see the word. Because you spoke and the trees came. When we see, you know, when we see that, that, that firmament, we see the word. When we see the waters, we see the word. Because your word created all of them. All of them. When we see the lions, when we see the elephants, we see your word. You spoke the word and they came into being. Father, we thank you. It's because of your word that everything is going to happen. Because of the word, we have the faith in the spoken word of God. We have the faith in your word, oh my God. We have your faith in your word. Not just in your hands, not just in your clothes, but in your word. Our faith is not based on your clothes. Our faith is not based on your hands. Our faith is not based on your feet. Our faith is not based on whatever, but our faith is based on your word. And because of your word, riches are coming, prosperity is coming, healing is coming, healing is flowing right now. Because you said so, because you said so, we thank you, Lord. And we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you honor. I just want you to close your eyes. And take about a minute meditating about that word you have believed that God is working in your life. Meditate upon that word and see that word becoming a reality, becoming flesh in your life. Yeah? As if someone is just near you. That word has become somebody, has become a reality, has become a reality in your life. You see it in Jesus' name. Yeah? That word of God. Meditate upon that word. Father, we thank you for your word. There is none like you. I just want to see someone. You came, you have a sickness, or you have pain. I just want you to raise up your hand wherever you are. You have a uh, pain, uh, just raise up that hand. I want to see if you have any sickness, you are, you are suffering from anything. Just put up your hand in the name of Jesus. Even those who are watching us online, if you have any sickness, you have, you have pain somewhere, I just want you to raise you, uh, to put one of your hand where you feel the pain, and one hand up. I'm going to speak the word of healing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we see these hands raised up. Your people have some pain and sickness somewhere, and sickness is not our portion. Jesus, that's why the word say that by your stripes we were healed. We are not just get, going to get healed, but we were healed. We just receive our healing right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against every sickness. I come against every pain. And I command it to live right now. In the name of Jesus, I command every pain go. Every tumor live in the name of Jesus. Every stomach live right now. Every pain, every kind of pain in the back everywhere, I command you to live right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you because your healing power is flowing through each and every one in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, because I know it is done in Jesus' name. Come on, I want you to thank him. Just wait. I want you to thank him for what has been your sickness or your pain. I say, Lord, I thank you because this one has gone. You, you know, thank you along that line. As you are clapping for him, I say, Lord, I thank you because this pain has gone. I thank you because the tumor has gone. I thank you. Speak in your, speak whatever has been your problem. Say, Lord, I thank you because this is gone in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, my Lord Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Let me tell you, it is done. It is done in Jesus' mighty name. It is done in Jesus' mighty name. And we have, uh, 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 because of time, we cannot uh, have testimonies right now. But I know God has done it. And uh, you can go to the table outside and say, I have to give testimony next Sunday. You come, with the, we, we, you, we glorify God what he has done. Amen. I want to see someone, you have someone who is sick at home. Or in the hospital somewhere, you know someone who is sick, who is uh, connected to you. If you are there, just put up your hand. You know so you have a sick person or in the hospital or anywhere, just raise up your hand. Okay. Now, I want to tell you, 
you are, leave your hand up. Now, Jesus is in you. The word is in you. I want you to speak the word of healing, you yourself, to that person. You know, you mention his name. Jesus said to the centurion, go, your servant. Yeah? He didn't give a name. I said, your servant. He came because the servant was sick. Now, you speak the name of that person and say, you, or, or, or Juliet, say, you, Juliet, where you are, in the hospital, bed in number, I command you, receive your healing in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, go and speak it. Speak it right now in Jesus' mighty name. Send that word to that person. Send that word to that person. It is going, believe it, it's going with all the power and all the authority in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you for those healing. We thank you for the people who are sick at home, who are sick in the hospital, who are sick everywhere, wherever they are. Your word is not limited. We thank you for their healing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Do you believe that? Give God the praise and thank him.